right? We covered three scaling options. We had that copy and paste approach. Um, and like, I don't know if any of you are Go developers or whatever, but I think it was, I don't know if it was Rod Pike or somebody, but a little bit of copying, right? Like, it's really not a bad thing. Um, that principle kind of remains true in Terraform. If your instances are vastly different from one another, right? You have an app instance, a database instance, a cache instance, whatever, then yes, I would, I would rather to see you copy them into their own individual resource blocks rather than use something like count or for each, because it's going to save you headaches later on. If your instances are more like cattle and you don't care which one is which, if you don't, you know, if you don't care which one gets destroyed or which one gets created, then something like count is probably what you want, right? Because count will guarantee that you always have that number of resources, but with the expectation that if you scale down and back up, you know, you might lose one, like you might lose instances that you may have cared about. So in a more cattle approach, count is probably what you're going to want. It allows rapid scaling um, without like, you know, having to copy and paste these resource blocks. Very, very good for like clones of infrastructure, right? I want 10 front end web servers, right? Like I want 10 front end um, service uh, servers in my, in my deployment. I don't care which 10, I just want 10 of them. That's really good use case for count. And for each kind of straddles the middle. Uh, for each has the same properties of count, but you just need keys. But it also kind of gives you that flexibility to address a single resource by itself, right? Just by its key. I'd be able to change just Alice's instance if I wanted to here, because I can address just Alice's instance with the key. So for each kind of is in this weird middle zone. And I think a lot of people take advantage, take advantage of that and they overload for each with this like large object, right? Like a map of maps or like a map or an array of maps or any, or any of those things. And they pass like everything in, in a for each object. That's fine. If you want to do it that way, that's perfectly fine. But you can run into issues with that as well, where like if I'm a new developer to your code base, I might have a difficult time changing, you know, things in your configuration because you've made it like overly complex with for each. So you have those three different ways of managing infrastructure. All of them have their use cases. Uh, for each is more of like in between, like maybe it's a pet, maybe it's a cattle. I don't know. It's up to you as a developer to kind of straddle that line. Um, I like to use for each when like I care about a specific instance over another, but they're related enough that they should be using most of the same configuration, right? Like in this case, just to go back into the config, all of these resources are using this same AMI and the same instance type. Uh, the things that change are like the tags, right? Metadata that doesn't matter too much. I could have just as easily created myself maybe like, you know, a map here or an array of maps. And I could have done like something like this. And I could have give Alice like more keys, right? So like, you know, instance type, I could have give Alice a key of instance type that said like, you know, T2 micro or something. So I can change things about Alice, but let me go like that. And there you go. So I could have changed things like about Alice, but in this case, I didn't affect Charlie or something like that. And that's kind of the idea is what I was getting at. And I probably wouldn't do this in a list. I'd probably just do this in like a map any and get rid of like this stuff, right? Cool. Boom, and like that, All right? So something like Forage gives you this flexibility and you can use these nested objects to control like just someone's instance versus another. But I would, I would advise you to exercise caution when doing something like this because you don't want to get to the point where it's like you have this for each object that you're iterating over to create similar resources, but you've added so many differences between the resources that now you maybe should have just copied and pasted it into another resource to, to begin with, right? You should have, maybe you should have, maybe Alice and Bob's and Charlie's resources get so different that it should have just been like, you copied it and called it like, here's Alice, right? Again, it's up to you as a developer to find this balance. That's why there's multiple approaches for you. There is no one size fits all, but now you kind of know the differences between the three different approaches and you can evaluate for yourself and go from there.